Hello and welcome to the High Value Home Market Update for quarter three, 2024 with me and Phil. A general election special, we'll call it. It's like being on Newsnight, isn't it? So the question is, what's the Labour government mean for the property market in your area and how could this impact you and your plans? So yeah. that is a big, bold question. And I know that you've done a lot of research into this. So what are the headlines, Phil? Yeah, and also um, it's a bit a bit of a prediction as these months play out. Um, it's the first major, well, it's the first party switch um, I've been involved with in terms of um, the agency. So I've tried to look at historical data and see um, what's happened with either party and then and, and, and plug that into the current market to see what um see if we can predict anything at all so uh, so just start off with what, what's happened so far in 2024 yeah that's what I was, was going to go so so far this year um depending which week you, you asked us um we probably have a different answer on how good the market was one week it could be amazing where we were selling everything and offers were great and then the following three to four weeks we were trying to persuade anyone um with any from anywhere to try and come and see our home so um there were it was like total polar opposites uh, and with very little reason or rhyme or reason as, as to why so and what um what has been sort of the general feeling around from the people that you've talked to buyers and sellers let's say and maybe our suppliers and sort of the wider community about what they thought the election was going to mean to them um <laughs> Because of the type of homes we sell and the type of clients we work with um, uh, and the price points, the, there's, a, there's a bit of concern about um, the likely taxes that, that are coming in, um, especially CGT, capital gains, and the impact that could have on, on either their future sale or if they, um, if they purchase... And they want to they need to sell in a in a period of time. What that could look like, um, so yeah. So the, the three months leading up to the election, and then definitely when the election was announced, uh, I think we were quite fortunate that what was it a five six week lead time? It was really yeah. short, wasn't it? Yeah. So so we were fairly um, uh, lucky in, in one sense that they went for a quick. I think he knew he was going to get beat, so he thought a, a, a quick death rather than a slow death. Um, and uh, and we saw a slight tailing off in number of viewings and, and buyers. Um, so what, what, you, what you're speaking about really is the fact that in the period of announce the election, have the election, quite often that uncertainty can keep buyers away and yeah. it means that you've got a general slowdown in viewings and interest. Yeah, and so, so usually, what we're saying is it was, it was less painful. For, well, yes. Painful exactly. for a short period of time. Yeah, so buyers and sellers usually wait um, and then on the other side of the election, really, no matter which side gets in, um, we see uh, a, a period of momentum of three, six months where um, sale figures are high, number of homes on the market are high, and the average property price um, go up. I think there was only once in the last seven where it didn't, and that was 2010. Um, I was, yeah. I, I didn't really have a clue what was happening in 2010. I was only 18 so you'll have to tell me um but that was still a follow-on from uh the, the financial crash yeah i think it definitely was the financial crash wasn't it was very sudden at first but it lasted a really long time you know three four years time uh, three four years after the crash we were still feeling the effects with lack of buyers particularly there was just all confidence gone in the market not at all like the roller coaster of the last few years um, at least what we're finding now is that we've had big highs and big lows, but um, it's been in a, quite a, a shortened period of time. So I think what we're seeing now really is market confidence returning. People are starting to be more positive about the economic future. They're starting to make good decisions. Um, we, we're finding that in the sort of, um, you know, prime tourist areas, people do still want second homes. Uh, and, and that's good for us. Yeah, <laughs> I think following um, the earlier announcements earlier in the year about the 
um, the holiday let restrictions and legislation that was coming in, we, we expected an, uh, an influx of properties that were holiday lets coming to market. And it happened for about a week, two weeks, but then sort of we haven't seen it since. Um, mm -hmm. And then they've got a year to sort that out. The yeah, and, legislation. and although the Labour manifesto was quiet about um, capital gains, I think it's sort of accepted. It's going to be an, it's an easy thing for them to move with their that doesn't impact the majority of their following. Um, so we expected either people rushing to market with you know, landlords with a selection of, of properties or the opposite, them not doing anything and waiting out for the next commitment. And all we've seen a couple of those. Um, I know the team in the Dales um, had a, uh, a collection of nine homes um, that, that someone owned and they wanted to sell for exactly that reason. Um, and that could, if, if that continues, that could lead to a lot more homes on the market, um, which depending on what they do with interest rates and depending on what they do with um, or how the market performs could go either way. It could be great for momentum or momentum, or it could get us a bit stuck. So a couple of more things that we mentioned uh, in our update, the, you mentioned CGT, capital gains tax, uh, lifetime allowance wasn't in the, um, in the manifesto and inheritance tax is definitely an easy target for a Labour government, isn't it? To go yeah, after. so with the lifetime allowance, we've seen, I've spoken to people um, over the last few weeks that are trying to push through their completions or their sales to get a figure into their lifetime allowance untaxed because um, I think it's expected that that's going to be removed totally. Um, so... Yes, yeah, so we've seen people try and move quickly on, on that side of things and inheritance tax. Uh, I guess the only impact that could have on the market is people decide to sell their homes early to try and give cash to family before passing. But I guess that's always a guess. As to when. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a seven year rule, isn't it? But yeah. I think maybe people might, might need to restructure their assets in different ways, but you know, we've had a high inher inheritance tax before, so we have been here before. Um, and well, what was the it, impact of this high last time? Um, that's a good question, and I don't have a specific answer. What I would say is that this that this seven year giveaway thing, where if you give your assets away seven years before your death, then they're exempt from the inheritance tax. What that does, though, is it attracts capital gains tax on the other side. So. You've got to find that middle ground where you're not being stung mm -hmm. by one of those two. Yeah. So I, I can't say it had a, a, a definite effect um, other than just to make people with big homes a bit upset. Yeah, um, I don't think there's anything on the forecast that's going to be drastic. It feels like there's just little um, tweaks that, that genuinely could could go either way. Um, they promised to, to build 1.5 million new homes, but... Yeah, forty exactly. percent of them need to be affordable, and the, the developers are saying, "Well, if it, that, that makes that's the profit gone on the site, so we're not building them. So who's who's going to build them? So they're, they're probably going to have to change." Well, actually, what? yeah, we've been talking about that, haven't we? Because um, I think in most areas of the country, unless there's a bylaw uh, to say otherwise, about one in eight properties on a new development have to be some kind of affordable homes. Uh, providing there's more than I think 40 being built or something whereas in, in the Lake District and I think also in the Dales that's more like one in four um, and obviously a planning committee can go well you can build there but they've all got to be affordable or you can build there but you know three of them have got to go to locals or whatever so they can make specific requirements about that particular development just as they do with developments where they say there's got to be a playground there's got to be a school etc yeah uh, uh, so I, we've I think... sold we've sold some of those affordable um property before on certain developments um, and we know how difficult they are to sell with that clause on so not only is the is the much lower ceiling in terms of what you can sell them for they're also difficult to sell um which in turn brings the price down so 40 percent also that doesn't really quite... help locals does it no if locals can't sell their own homes then actually they can't have movement you know economic movement either so no, no and that is yeah, and you're right. And let's say the average price of a um, development was five hundred thousand, and the affordable one is two fifty. As um, 
let's say in 10, 15 years, they double in value, the, the difference between them grows enormously. So it doesn't, it doesn't uh, probably, um, you know, if it's 10 to 15 years to double for the normal properties on the development, it's probably 20, 25 years for the, um, uh, for the affordable. So it, it just becomes. Yeah, and I did have a bit of an issue with the affordable as well, because we know from around where, well, we're based in the three areas we're based, the, you, if you've got a really lovely development of, you know, exclusive homes and the developers had to put some affordable houses in, they'll get the worst plots. They'll be right at the very back of the development. They'll be overlooking the local sewerage plant or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a particularly nice area of the development. I think if they're going to do something like that, maybe they have to dot them around the development or something. But yeah, I, I think always, the whole- always last, always last one's built. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, they're always back of the, yeah. It's- um, Very, and, very low. You can't, low, you can't low blame low. them because because they know that they'll potentially lower the value of the others and the profits on the others, so. It's just yeah, and also they're the trying to you know, they, these are these are companies that are trying to make a profit out of the site, so yeah. you can understand how they're going to do it at the, at the lowest possible cost. So I understand that. Um, yeah. Should we just move on to the predictions that, or not necessarily predictions, but what could happen with this yeah. um, new Labour government? So we talked about landlords, second homeowners, uh, and then transactional values, really, and uh, also the. the whether the economy is going to be boosted or suppressed by these. Should we do those one at a time? Landlords, first of all, larger portfolios. What we've said in our update is they may want to dispose of their assets until either a new government is in power yeah. or new tax rule emerges. I've just been talking to somebody actually today that said that there's so, so fewer now uh, rental properties available as a whole across mm. the country, which is why we've got a massive shortage of them because landlords have felt forced to sell by the previous government's tax rules. And actually, I think Labour's going to make it even worse. It's going to be yeah. even more it, tough to be a landlord. It's a pitch from both sides. It's you sell, we're going to nail you on CGT. Um, don't yeah. sell, you're going to have all these restrictions where tenants get all these extra rights. And, and we're not saying right or wrong, but it, it's going to be a pinch from both sides where unless you own... 10, 20, where it's actually a business, it, 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 yeah. it's almost pointless. If you, have, if you have, yeah, like you say, large scale portfolio and you put it into a limited company and you've got a really good tax advisor and you manage it yourself, then I think that that can work. If you are watching this update and you've got a house that you happen to own that you either inherited or that you know, you've moved in together, you and your partner, and you've still got the old house and you're renting it out, it's you that's going to get stung the most because it's you that's got to pay the landlord's tax. It's you that's got to face all these new tenant restrictions and the Reform Act and everything that you've got to, all those hoops you've got to jump through. So it might be you that goes, actually, do you know what, Phil and Sam, can you sell my house for me? Because it's just not worth hanging on to. But that then could affect your your future wealth, your pension, because that £250,000 house is going to be worth 500000 in 10 years' time and potentially a million in 20 years' time. Yeah, and, and uh, I don't know... A whole about it but from speaking to clients and and buyers and sellers um the the lifetime allowance if you can somehow get a property in there or, or get the funds out of the property and get your funds in there before it gets taxed it seems uh that's the way many people are going yeah a quick caveat we are not tax advisors <laughs> so Quite take what we're saying with a pin that we're just speculating yeah um, and, and what okay. we're being told from people as well Yes, of course. Second homeowners and families who have inherited homes may decide to let their properties rather than selling. So again, we're still going to get a stone because you're going to be a landlord then and not a, not a seller. Um, mm. And also, I suppose you asked about what the impact on a larger, uh, a higher rate of inheritance tax is. I suppose the impact is, let's say you've inherited your family home. So the home that you were brought up in that your parents have left you. And if the inheritance tax is at a reasonable level, you might actually be able to afford to keep it if it's not a reasonable level, you are going to be obliged to sell it to pay for the inheritance tax. So I suppose that's the difference, isn't it? And yeah, what they're talking about is multi-generational inheritance um, being unfair. Yeah, and they... I don't think they're going to look kindly on anybody with multiple dwellings. Um, so I think they're going to add in taxes, whether it's stamp duty on a second, third, fourth property or whatever it may look like, I think 
do, what they already do in Wales, isn't it? It's punitive in Wales. Something like five times council um, tax. Council tax. Yeah, it's think, it's really yeah. punitive. Yeah, I think it's four times in some areas. Yeah, it is, is. It is really really amazing. high. I think you know all this government needs to do. <laughs> I'll stand on my soapbox again. He's, he's just incentivised. Look, he's definitely watching. Mm. If you're watching this. PM Starmer, just look after the landlords. That's all we ask. Because if you looked after the landlords, the whole economy works better from every point of view, from a, a wealth point of view. So you're not having to look after us in our old age because we can actually provide ourselves with a pension. And uh, and also for people trying to get on the property ladder who need cheap rent so they could save up for their first house. At the moment, they can't do that. They're either living in mum and dad's um, or they're living in the, the worst kind of accommodation, paying over the top rentals, and then not being able to save up their deposit. So it's actually the it's the at the moment it's the worst case scenario, and it, I think it needs to be changed. He's definitely watching, isn't he? Yep. And I'm so sure what are people there. thinking about selling? Uh, so if you think about selling, well, now is the best time, and you may feel like we often say that. <laughs> um, we yeah. ha we have had a period of uncertainty. We've had a massive high in 2021 where suddenly everybody wanted to live in a beautiful area like the Lakes and Dales. And then we had a massive, I'm not going to say it was a crash the following year, but the, the buyers disappeared, partly because a lot of them had bought early. And then yeah. and then partly because actually I think that they that there was a bit of uncertainty. They felt like the market was a bit overheated. Some of them felt that they didn't want to overpay for a home. So it went back to below what a normal would be. So we're up here, then we're down there. And I think what's happened now is we're here. So now we're at a level where we can predict how long a property is going to be on the market, what valuation is going to be valid for more than three months, which in the last couple of years we haven't been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so we've either been going in, you know, low, and then people have been coming in with massive prices, over, um, massive offers over asking price, which is what happened in 2021. And we've had to put prices up on the market. And then the opposite happened in 2020. To 2023, where actually offers were coming in a long way below that. And so now what's happening is we can put a property on the market and with some certainty say, yes, this is the right valuation. It's a it's a mid-range, it's a mid-valuation, so it'll last at least six months, and we expect to attract offers at this. So it actually makes our job a lot easier, but it actually allows people to plan. Yeah. Because imagine if you saw at the beginning of um, I don't know, 2021 or the end of 2020. And then you saw that same buyer put your house back on the market and make another hundred grand out of it in the next 12 months, which is what happened many, many times. And that mm. makes people uncertain about selling. Yeah. Uh, and if if I was a weatherman for the property market, um, uh, there's certain points in the future I, I would look at. So one is the election has just gone historically we have a, a nice period after the, after the election. Um, when you say nice period, what's that mean? Um, a nice period for selling, um, okay. where lots of buyers around paying good prices, house prices rise, et cetera. Um, 1st of August, the Bank of England is sitting down and hopefully they're finally realising they made a huge mistake putting the interest rates so high and they're going to bring them down. And then if we're super, super, super lucky, six weeks later, um, I think it's the middle of September. They sit down again and they're going to they'll do it again. That's um, what I hope will happen and what I predict to happen. That's what I'm being told is going to happen. Um, not that like I've got some secret info from the Bank of England. Hotline um, to the Bank of England. Yeah. And and, and uh, again, I don't think the Labour Party have any impact, any power uh, in terms of um, getting the Bank of England to do anything with interest rates but they are going to be desperate for them to be all their propaganda is going to be on how good the economy is doing to try and bring the interest rates down um so hopefully we get um a good period for the election we get interest rates dropping twice and then september october november is a really good time for us anyway so add all that together and, and hopefully it creates a, a cake of buyers <laughs> I'm not sure why a cake. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. I think if you even if you took the election out of the equation completely and the uncertainty we've had the last few months, in a normal year, and let's we haven't had a normal year for a lot of years, have we? But in a normal year, this time of year, so we're recording this in July, we're going to get a period of everybody doing 
other things like watching the football and going on holiday and thinking about starting a new school. And then in September, that's when the buyers start coming back to the market. They normally view in September, offer in October, the one to be in by Christmas. So it's a yeah. really nice, uh, busy, buoyant time for the property market, isn't it? But it's it's just, um, it happens because it happens. So we're all sheep, aren't we? Even, or even us sat here going, September's a good time. People go, let's buy in September, let's sell in September. And then because they think that, that happens. Don't tell them that. And then, yeah, we're trying to change the rhetoric around August. The, the appointments have been with two recently. People say, <laughs> August is quiet, isn't it? I'm trying to say, no, no, it's all right. So I've been contacted a couple of times over the last few weeks by people, and I'm sure you have as well, saying, we're not thinking about selling, but could you give us a valuation? And I think now is the time to do that because if you've had your, your house for any more than four years, so let's say you bought it before 2020, you probably have no idea what it's worth. How, the, how does the layperson know what that house is worth now? You saw it go up in price and then you probably thought, actually, is it reduced in value? So what we're here to do is help you and help you come up with them um, or help you decide on the right strategy for selling your home, whether you're just what valuation now and you think about selling in 10 years time or, or whether you're actually thinking about an imminent sale. Now is the time to talk to us because we can give you uh, all, the, all the information you need to be able to make that decision. And we give you an update valuation based on everything else that's happening in the property market and historical data as well as right now data. And that just helps you make a decision, doesn't it? I hope so. If it doesn't, we're not doing our jobs correctly. <laughs> so you won't be wasting our time. As long as you make us a cup of tea, we don't mind. Either Phil or I or Hannah or Tom will come out and see you and spend an hour with you, find out all about your moving plans or lack of them and give you our best advice. And that is completely free and without strings. So wherever you're watching this from, um, thank you very much for watching. If you already get our high value homes update through the post, then you know this is a compliment to that and it, it helps. If you've been watching this online and you'd like further chat, then just drop us a line. Thanks very much. Bye.